Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Castlekeeper Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I am going to be uh, attempting to answer a question uh, that came from a commenter on my channel uh, and it commented that I will read out to you and this goes back to my Castles and Crusades Monsters and Treasures video uh, going back at least two years. So uh, I really am appreciative of my, uh, you know, of my subscribers or just those that are passing through on my channel uh, when they go back to some of my older videos and, and still pose these questions because I think it's, uh, it, it, it really talks about the level of engagement uh, that I am blessed with on my channel that people don't just look at my, uh, you know, my videos that I posted yesterday but they really are digging deeper and deeper into my channel and looking at that back catalog of videos. So, uh, so thank you very much. So this comes from Dr. Topper and he says, I'm kind of a noob, but why not use the monsters and treasures from basic fantasy? Is it not compatible? Uh, so I I'm going to try to address that and then I will give you the, you know, uh, the two potential short answers to that and then this video here might be the longer um, the longer answer to uh, that question so um, first of all I'll start with one of the shorts so short answer to that is um, is yes you can use basic fantasy monsters uh, however you will have to tweak them uh, to fit within the system of castles and crusades, or vice versa. All right, um, you you could take from castles and crusades and and use those monsters that are unique to castles and crusades, and use them in basic fantasy. However, you will have to change them. So that's the you know that's the short answer. So why is a change necessary? Is what I'm going to get into in this longer form explanation. And I will switch views here. So, um, number one, I am utilizing Basic Fantasy 3rd Edition. This is the copy that I have, and I'm reminded now that a 4th Edition is out. And I really should consider upgrading. Um, I will take a look at the 4th Edition PDF to see how it does change. And uh, maybe I will upgrade to the... Um, to the fourth edition and then this will become something that I give away uh, on the channel um, but that's my comparison right so I am using I am using basic fantasy third edition as the basis of my comparison and I am using monsters and treasures and this is the um, this is not the newest printing this is the fifth printing of Monsters and Treasures. I believe the sixth printing is the one that is currently in the works, basically removing the OGL and changing some of the nomenclature and such, but not really changing the monster structure in any uh, significant way. So let's start taking a look at their system here. So now this is not explicitly stated in monster creation for uh, for castles and crusades, so I'm looking through and trying to glean some, uh, you know, some patterns in their creation, and, and and the difference that I see, the big difference between the two systems, and one that you would have to adjust, taking monsters from basic fantasy to use them in castles and crusades, is with the hit dice type that exists in Castles and Crusades. So Castles and Crusades has uh, a system where hit dice isn't just the number of hit dice, but it's the type of hit dice. And the type of hit dice seems to be tied to the size of the creature. So let me explain that. So if a, t if a creature is tiny, its hit die, it could have 10 hit die and be tiny, um, but its hit die type are going to be D4s. So it could be a 10th level uh, monster 
with just you know between 10 and 40 hit points and uh, and that's fine it works within that system if it's a small creature it will tend to have a d6 um, now some small creatures at the upper end of small might have a d8 just as some medium-sized creatures that are on the lower end of what's considered medium size might have a d6 but those are kind of uh, you know kind of rare and niche um, so small creatures will have typically a d6 as their hit die type um, medium-sized creatures will have a d8 in some cases rare cases a d10 large creatures will have a d10 and huge creatures will have a d12 and, and like I said on the edges of each of those there are some uh, disparity in there now both systems uh, both fa basic fantasy role-playing game and castles and crusades uh, use ascending armor class so that's that's fine both systems use a basic to hit system in other words your characters type and level will give them a plus modifier uh, towards uh, being able to hit and basic fantasy has a similar system to that of um, to that of castles and crusades so when you're rolling your damage um, you're, you're rolling your attacks, I'm sorry. When you're rolling your attacks, you're going to take that modifier and attach it to your roll. And so the armor class is your target number. So if you're looking at a creature um, from Castles and Crusades, and I'll, I'll use the uh, Amphis Baina, which is a mythic creature. And I'll talk about that as a difference as well uh, between the two systems. Um, this creature here is small. It's a it's a snake-like creature. I'll show you. It's this creature right there. It's a snake-like creature from mythology, uh, and and that from mythology has a bearing on the stats for this creature. So it is small. It's between three and four feet uh, long. It has hit dice of three, using a d6, and that is because it is a small creature. All right, um, it has one attack, it has its bite, but its bite does 4d8 damage. All right, and that's a big difference between uh, basic fantasy and, um, you know, and monsters and treasures from castles and crusades, is that some of these creatures in castles and crusades have these extraordinarily high damage output all right and that's because the system of castles and crusades has in general higher hit points at um you know for the different character classes right a, a fighter i believe in um in basic fantasy has a d8 um yeah i just kind of looked at it really quickly so a d8 and, um, you know, fighter types in Castles and Crusades will minimally have a D10 and in some cases a D12 as their hit die type. So there are, there are more dangerous creatures of small size if they're mythic um, than what you have in basic fantasy. So... So that's the one big adjustment I think you would have to use taking basic fantasy monsters from that system over to Castles and Crusades is that you're going to have to modify their um, you're going to have to modify their uh, their hit dice type you know so what die is used for their uh, hit points because in basic fantasy it uses a generic d8 across the board uh, for all hit die. Um, the other difference is that monsters in uh, monsters in castles and crusades get a plus one to hit per hit die that they have. So if they have um, three hit dice, they're getting a plus three. If they have 
eight hit die, like I'm looking at a, a, uh, an ant lion. Um, that has, uh, which is a large creature, D8 damage, uh, D8 hit die. Um, so that's like one of those large creatures that kind of crosses between a D8 and a, um, you know, and a D10. So it's kind of on the, the lower end of large, um, you know, and that one's bite does uh, 5D4. So between 5 and 20 hit points of damage with a single bite, um, that's a lot of damage output. Uh, and that's something that you will have to consider when you're bringing monsters from basic fantasy over into castles and crusades, or vice versa. Um, because that was the one thing that um, he didn't mention in, you know, his comment was, you know, or, you know, taking creatures from castles and crusades and moving into basic fantasy. Let me let me take a look at some of the output damage of some of these um, some of these creatures. Let me find some common uh, common creatures on both ends, right? So I am going to look for. Um, let's see if we have a we have a tiger beetle. Uh, I'm not sure. If castles and crusades will have a beetle, uh, specifically a tiger beetle, so let's let's go to beetles. That's weird. I'm not even finding beetle right here. Let's find something else that's common. Uh, so a wild boar, and I'm in that section here basically. So let's go to a wild boar and do a comparison. So wild boar in Castles and Crusades is a medium-sized creature. It has two hit die, and uh, those are D8 hit die. So in comparison, a wild boar in um, and basic fantasy has three hit dice. The wild boar in um, in castles and crusades does a gore, which does two d six damage. The wild boar in um, in basic fantasy does two d four damage. All right, so more damage output. On the wild boar here, the wild boar in um, in basic fantasy is going to have a slightly higher uh, hit die um, and higher range of hit points as well. Uh, so a little bit tougher here. The boar in basic fantasy fights as a three hit die creature or fighter, so it fights on the fighter table. All monsters in Castles and Crusades fight on the uh, fighter table, basically. They get plus one to hit per hit die that they have. Um, uh, they, they save as a fighter as well, whereas in Castles and Crusades, um, the boar is going to have a physical save. Right, so saves of physical, so any kind of a physical save, that means that if it's using a strength save, a dexterity save, or a constitution save, that is its prime score. So its target number for that kind of a save is uh, just a 12 on a d20. Um, it's going to add its hit die to that, um, so to that roll, and, and so, a wild boar in castles and crusades making a saving throw let's say for dexterity to avoid a pit trap or something like that would roll a d20 and add plus two to it and therefore it would um it would save on any roll of a 10 or above all right um the boar in the boar in uh basic fantasy is going to take a look at the 
fighter level three and roll a saving throw based on that for the very, very specific thing of what it's doing at across the board, right? So it's for all saves across the board. In Castles and Crusades, um, its mental saving throw uh, is not its prime, right? So it's not a physical saving throw. And so it is, you know, so if it's making a save versus its intelligence or its wisdom, you know, or its charisma, let's say, then it is uh, going to be at a disadvantage and have a target of 18. Still gets its plus two for its level, but a little bit, you know, a little bit harder for it to actually make that roll. So looking at the two systems, can you take from one and move to the other? Absolutely, you can. But you do have to tweak it up a little bit. I think the biggest tweak is going to be um, in the hit die type. So that's the no, you know, one of the things. The other thing that I see with uh, in differences between the two systems is that the um, the bore, and we'll use the bore for the example, a bore in basic fantasy gives you a flat 145 experience points. The bore in the bore in castles and crusades is going to give you 10 plus two per hit point. So if you have a creature with 16, 16 would be um, would be 32, so 42 experience points. So you can see the difference between the two. A lot more experience points being gained for killing a boar in basic fantasy than you would in uh, killing a, a wild boar razorback in castles and crusades. So, um, so hit, uh, I mean, experience points, um, rewards for killing certain monsters, if you're porting from one system to the other, will also have to be looked at, all right, and tweaked. So, um, yes, it can be done, um, but you do have to make those modifications. Otherwise, you're not working within the, within the optimized system that both, you know, are optimized for, right? You're to take monsters directly from castles and crusades and move them into, you know, basic fantasy. Um, the player characters in basic fantasy are going to have a much harder time dealing with monsters and, you know, from castles and crusades. And although they'll, and they won't get the same kind of experience points, you know, um, the experience points are going to have to be adjusted for that as well. Um, and vice versa, you know, you'll have to make those changes. So my question back, and this is my other short answer, uh, is, you know, why not just use the monsters that are in, you know, the specific systems uh, that, that they come with? Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be very many creatures that are in monsters and treasures that, um, you know, that the common creatures, I should say, uh, that aren't also in basic fantasy and vice versa. Um, there's nothing in basic fantasy that isn't already in Monsters and Treasures. Um, although I wasn't finding Beetle, you know, right off the top of, my, you know, right off the bat. Um, so let's see where they actually put Beetles. Because for some reason, I did not see... And they might have them uh, separated by different things, like specifically like a Fire Beetle. Uh, let's see if they have Fire Beetle. There's so many fey and fairy creatures that... Um... Why aren't I finding beetles in... Uh... In, in this? Uh, so weird. 
So, um, yeah, I'll have to delve a little bit deeper into that. Why am I finding beetles in, in castles and crusades uh, right now? I'm just not using the index, you know, correctly. But, um, you know, I'm sure that there are beetles, uh, you know, fire beetles and bombardier beetles and those kinds of things in castles and crusades. I'm just not finding them off the top of my head here. So I hope that kind of answers the question. Uh, and I will try to, I'm going to switch views. I will try to uh, summarize very, very briefly uh, for, uh, for Dr. Topper is that, um, yes, you can. You can use monsters from basic fantasy to castles and crusades and vice versa. Um, but you do need to change, I think, in my opinion, you do need to change the hit die type. Um, so not just generically use um, the D8 that basic fantasy is using across the board. Um, you'll also have to uh, change the fact that they um, that their saving throws are modified based on the number of hit die that they have and not the um, the saving throw type like fighter three or something across the board uh, most basic creatures in castles and crusades have a saving throw advantage for physical uh, saving throws and um, and only very few like um, you know aberrations or you know uh, abominations or um, exceptional type creatures might have intelligence some have across the board right both physical and uh, mental uh, mental saving throws uh, all at a 12 target number on a d20 and then they're adding their bonuses for their their hit die um, you do have creatures that are in um, castles and crusades, like I said, that are that are very disparate. In you know they could have uh, they could be tiny and have ten hit die. Um, they can you you typically don't see that in um, in other game systems, uh, or they could be small, uh, have low hit points and low hit die, and yet do. 4d10 damage in with a single bite which is like crazy amount of damage output for such a small low hit point creature now and then the other thing is that uh xp on the flat rate is going to be higher in basic fantasy but i think in general with those more powerful creatures they are going to, because they have special abilities and everything, you're going to have higher um, higher one-for-one -one, uh, XP coming from the monsters in, uh, in Castles and Crusades. So um, I recommend having both, you know, having both systems and, and playing both systems. And uh, it really is an interesting uh, question. I'm glad you put it out there. Um, and again, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you're looking at some of the older content on my channel. And I hope that this answered your, your question to a certain extent. Um, you know, once again, to reiterate, yes, you can use basic fantasy monsters just with some minor tweaking in Castles and Crusades and, and vice versa. Uh, and, and just be mindful of the balance issues that might come up if you're um if you're porting these monsters from basic fantasy over into castles and crusades where the the characters in um castles and crusades are going to be you know a little bit more um a little bit uh more powerful than what you might end up with in basic fantasy and so you might have to increase the power of the uh, basic fantasy monsters you're porting over into castles and crusades uh, particularly with like damage output and that kind of a thing um, just to make them equally challenging let's say so um, so yeah really interesting question 
Uh, I, I love, you know, I've, I always say it, you know, virtually at the end of every single video that I do, that I love your comments because your comments drive me to think about the games that, you know, I'm covering and look at them in a different way. And uh, you are the driver of my content. And this is a perfect example of that. So, um, yeah, so please feel free to, uh, you know, to subscribe and like and comment, particularly, you know, on any video in my, uh, you know, in my catalog. I don't, I don't care if you go all the way back to six, seven years looking at my uh, back catalog. I will revisit those games uh, if you're uh, if you're asking me to do so, uh, especially with you know very insightful questions like this, uh, and um, and as always, uh, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon. I look forward to seeing you at a uh, at a convention. You know you're welcome to you know sit at my table you know anytime and uh, you know especially like convention spaces where. We have, uh, you know, sometimes we, we'd get, you know, five seats and everything. And I've never turned anyone away to, like, if they come up and say, hey, do you have room for one more? Um, I always have room for one more. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, something now I can't take 10 more, but, you know, certainly can take one more at a table. Um, or if, if I have an empty seat, you know, at a convention and you, you not slotted for that time spot, uh, you're welcome to have a seat as well. So that's a across the board blanket invitation to anyone that is looking to game. Uh, you know, my table is always open for a plus one. Uh, and, um, and that's generally how I like to run my home games as well, which are always online. Um, and, they, you know, the thing that I think that our, um, our hobby needs a lot more of is just that openness and welcoming to allow, you know, anyone to sit at your table, provided that they're coming to your table to play. So once again, thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, thanks for the comment and question. And you'll have a good one. Take care.